Angel Dust Seven has subscribed to you on YouTube. Oh boy, here. Oh, comment post on a whole lot of Bob. Angel Dust Seven, you guys are pretty fucking rocking. Laughing loud, awesome sound. I wonder how did these people get my stuff? You know, I mean, I'm. How do they get my personal account? Because nobody's interested in this shit. Me, my vlog. I guess. I mean, I linked them together yesterday, but this is a pretty cool guy, actually, or girl, because that their channel is neatly laid out. How nice. Awesome sound. Well, that was cool. Yeah, you know, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about internet addiction and other addictions because, uh, God, I had an internet addiction, kind of a weird one, an interesting one, and in the early 90s, and, uh, um, when sort of video conferencing actually first came out, not even YouTube, that was impossible then, uh, video used to be huge files and a big hassle but I somehow I was writing code for somebody or something I got hooked up with Cornell University video conferencing see you see me that's where everybody logs on to a uh, a common computer and you can all see each other on the screen this is the early 90s and uh, I uh, I did it a lot and then I met a guy John who was an Australian who was uh, stationed at the South Pole in like a only him and an isolation deal and he was like underneath ice but there was an antenna for a wireless connection it was crazy and I really liked him and we spent a lot of time as I was mastering albums I'd be up almost you know like now 24-7 <laughs> and uh, I spent a lot of time on the reflector at Cornell and with him on that reflector we had a lot in common you know science and stuff and I liked him uh, it uh, he reminded me of that movie Jodie Foster's in where they're talking to people around the world you know his camera angle and everything is like oh, yep I'm trucking it and it's straight out of Vega you know <laughs> like that guy the the accent and the, uh, the the camera angle and Australian everything but I started spending a whole lot of time doing that in video conferencing. And uh, my girlfriend was a psychiatrist at the time. And she, uh, a really smart woman, cool woman. As I said, another one, smart woman, cool woman. Of course, I fucked her over. I just, you know, I had to, right? The cool ones. So one night I was video conferencing. And her, her reasons were selfish in a way, I think. And, and also insightful, though, because she said... Uh, um, this video conferencing and she was really diplomatic she said you know this video conferencing habit of yours or this thing that you do it wasn't an attack or anything she goes this makes it appear as if you have an actual social life you know it gives the illusion that you have a social life and uh, I had I'd never really considered that, you know, and I was like, wow, and, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, right, and then I beat her around, and, you know, no, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, whatever, I, uh, I thought about it, and, uh, I, uh, I later, um, I thought about it and I thought, you know, she may be right. I may be addicted to this. She was kind of saying, and we were both in recovery, you know, alcohol and drug recovery. So at the time and clean and sober, both of us many years. And so I was like, okay, I can look at this. So, you know, as I began to look at it, I realized, my gosh, I do spend like 24 hours a day doing this. And I sort of got that rush of like, oh, I'm crazy. I'm out of control. This is nuts. That, that sort of thing when you realize you're doing something way too much. And then I realized... Well, let me look at this and I did over a period of weeks and I kept doing it and then finally I realized like well this is like unlike the project I'm doing now which is leading to a lot of things uh, you know a career and uh, um, 
in many different areas and, and creativity and stuff that was just sitting there yakking with people and uh, so yeah that, there was a whole deal involved there but I think that came up because um, I've had like uh, it's hard to say that it's kind of weird I thought nobody would ever watch this but I've had like seven people tell me they were addicted to my video log to please keep making it you know and I was like okay that's cool because this is mainly just for me to document this little journey I'm in uh, I'm on and uh by the way, there's a major, major marketing thing going on in the test phases now for my music project. And in the last three months, it's going to be amped up tremendously. So I'm not like some crazy YouTube dreamer guy. And people really, really like what I'm doing. So there's playlists on the homepage of this video. Check it out, you know, if you want to see some music and stuff. And uh, But yeah, that was really difficult. And I'm trying to think, you know the core of internet addiction and everything oh yeah you know what I did do I, I did I wrote about my life and I, and I instead of going oh my god I'm gonna quit right now like when I realized I was addicted to morphine it's like you can't just go well my god I'm gonna quit right now because seizures and hospitals and rehab but I began to look at it and go you know this is a problem and so that's what I did at, as, as I began to look at my internet sort of addiction at the time and uh now it's a job and that's I love it and it's what I do and I make music and videos so it's cool you know I'm, I'm if I'm addicted to it that's fine it's leading somewhere um, but uh, yeah that was a real issue but what I what I did and what I do when I'm faced with something like that is um, write about it think about it I tend not to make big giant dramatic shifts in my stuff until I I realize what is behind this in my real life and writing on things has been an invaluable tool for me because it's right in front of you that way you know it's right in front of me in black and white and I can then circle and underline and, and it lives outside of me and that is how, anytime I'm in a pinch I write about something and uh, so that's uh yeah, I had several people tell me to keep, ask me to keep making the video log and, and emails. They don't comment on the log, but they go back and forth, which it surprised me. 400 people looked at this last, uh, this site, my video log site last month. And uh, so that's cool. I mean, that's good. You know, I'm just sort of documenting my journey here and it's been a, a, an incredible journey in 30 days I mean you know of marketing this thing and making all the stuff making all the videos and, and recording the music it's like been this quest you know and it's I've designed this whole project to bring my all the my entire life together and have it make sense otherwise I haven't been my mom doesn't even know I'm really a musician on the level that, you know, a professional. And she doesn't know of all the things I've done. I, I can't remember if I mentioned it in this, but I calculated today. Three billion people have heard music that I've worked on. Uh, the records that I've mastered and, and produced and engineered and been a part of. Three billion people. That's uh, the half the planet. And... Uh, now that's over a 20 year period having worked on hundreds and hundreds of, of gold and platinum albums as a mastering engineer so uh, and other a lot of other projects but that's kind of cool so yeah this is it's really been a really enriching experience and you know I've sort of had to uh, marketing and promotion always made me sort of I've never done it for myself before and it made me sort of feel bad and embarrassed and like one of the people watch my video watch my video on YouTube type thing I, I don't do that at all but um, what I've kind of learned is that a lot of the stuff like my mom not knowing that I'm a musician it's because 
I've never really told her, and the times I have, I haven't made it clear. She's, like, not really paying much attention, as we all are busy with our own lives. Everybody's busy with their own YouTube page, so it's hard for them to sort of take things seriously when when you say, listen, I'm, I've got something going on that's really cool, the project and the videos and the music, but also there's a marketing thing that this is working and it's happening, you know. Well, of course, people think you're insane. It's YouTube, you know. <laughs> He's insane. But no, there's a solid plan behind this. And uh, I just really want to do the best work of my life. That's, And I am. I am. For me, you know. For myself. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the other thing I've learned is like, it's up to me to show people. You pretty much have to not only do good work now, but uh, sort of doing good work isn't enough with YouTube. Uh, you you've got to do good work, and then you've got to market it. But you've you've it's it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff, and uh, I I've I mean. There, there's so many aspects, but yeah, I mean, as far as the marketing, I just didn't feel it was fair to be a professional and be bombarded with people with laptops making albums, which I enjoy sometimes, but then there's professionals, you know, and, and uh, the industry I've worked in, so uh, yeah, uh, I think that's a different thing, um, and uh, I've learned not to take really advice or sort of career advice from people who are like you know they're working on laptops and garages and shit I, I need to get a little more serious about it because at one time I did actually sort of listen to uh, some of uh, some of the people that I've known a little bit on YouTube and and in life that I really had no business even bothering paying attention you know they had no professional input and uh they're and they're rightfully so they're they're uh they're busy with their own projects so that's that's the way life works you can't expect other people to pay any attention to you uh because they're busy with their own thing but the great thing about this project is people around the world have paid attention to me in a big way which tells me this is this is cool so yeah <laughs>